Hi, I'm Dr. Joe and I am to lovethatface.com and if you follow our channel, you know that uh, I'm a cosmetic facial surgeon in Richmond, Virginia. You also know that my favorite procedure is face and neck lift surgery. Uh, we do about 100 a year and I've done over 1,300 of them and uh, I just love going to work and I love doing cosmetic surgery. I've done a, a recent video on uh, how to be a good patient and have a good recovery. And recovery is something I could do a feature film on because it's a very complex situation. For some procedures, there's very little recovery and very little uh, emotional concern. But for other procedures, there's an extended recovery and it affects your emotions, your health, your, uh, your you know, well-being, your psychology. It affects your, your home life and the people around you. So I want to talk a little bit about this and I'm going to show you a slideshow in a second. So just about everything in life follows a bell-shaped curve where you start out, you have a little bit, then you have the maximum, and then you go back down to normal. And um, recovery is the same way. So, you know, before surgery, people are a little anxious and then they have this surgery and boom, it's an assault on their body, literally. And, you know, they're swollen, maybe burnt from laser, uh, so many physical changes. They look so different. And it's really uh, an emotional roller coaster on that bell shaped curve. So, you know, right out of the shoot, the first couple days after surgery, people think they, God, what have I done? Did I make a mistake? Um, you know, I don't know if I can stand this. Then they get to the top and then they start going down the other slope and they feel better. And then that wasn't so bad. And then pretty soon they're, you know, they're so glad they did it and they're telling their friends. So, uh, a lot of this stuff, you know, again, I compare it sometimes to childbirth. If you asked a woman on the labor table, you know, if they're going to have another baby, they may say no. Uh, however, once you get past uh, those memories, uh, we often will uh, do things again. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about the roller coaster of recovery for facelift surgery or any cosmetic surgery in general. Now, as you know, I'm not one to read script, but I am going to read some of this because I don't want to miss anything. So if we'll start down here uh, at the bottom, it's important for the patient to understand that surgery, cosmetic surgery or any type of surgery is a strain on the body and they'll likely have less energy during the early recovery period, need much more rest than usual. They may be bruised, swollen in some discomfort and all this is stress on the body. Even watching TV may be a strain at first. So smart patient, patients plan ahead to ensure they have the proper caretakers, as we've talked about, and uh, they can use that early recovery period to rest and heal. Um, diet is also important for uh, high protein and hydration, and it's not uncommon for patients to experience this emotional roller coaster during the first several weeks after surgery. Some patients may become angry or depressed, or cry for no reason. Others may become short with their family or caregivers. And this is especially true if a patient uh, uh, becomes sleep deprived. And you know, when you're, when you're recovering and you can't go out of the house and you're stuck in one place and you have some discomfort and you're sleep deprived, it can all uh, add up to you. So a, a sleep, sleepless patient who's having pain or looking at a swollen, bruised stranger in the mirror can, in turn, uh, can turn into an emotional zombie. So uh, I tell all my patients, please let me or my staff know if they're having these types of problems. The more rest you get, the faster you'll heal and the better you will feel. So let's kind of go over here how we feel after cosmetic surgery. So, you know, that first week, some people are like so low energy and they just feel they're not going to make it. Uh, they get into that second week and they're feeling better, but they can become a you know, a little nitpicky and say, oh my gosh, what did I do? Did I make a mistake? Am I ruined for life? This is never going to heal. And then you get into that, you know, the swelling starts going down and people can see the difference. And sometimes they become a show off and they're happy because they can see a difference and their family can see a difference and they notice those reactions. Okay. And then you get going on anywhere between the uh, third and 12th week and uh, you're getting compliments. You look wonderful. Wow. I, the patient loves it. I'm going to buy new clothes, right? And what procedure is next? So again, you have this kind of emotional roller coaster that's uh, up and down, and that's important 
to realize. So, you know, cosmetic surgery uh, can be emotional and some patients uh, may not be themselves for a short time. And, and all of these other slides are just kind of underlining what we've been talking about. So the patient's personality can vary from out of it to being mad at the world. Or like I said, they can start crying and they don't know why. Uh, sometimes the combination of looking bruised and swollen and, and all the things we talked about it can really add up and put a stress on the patient, but not only the patient, but their, their family and caregivers. And uh, so uh, my office and I understand uh, these processes and how to deal with them. So if a patient doesn't feel themselves, it's really important to let us know. Now, I want to tell you that most patients don't have these problems. Most patients do quite well, but it's not impossible to have uh, these problems or some of them or in very rare cases, all of them. So again, that, that um, first day of surgery, you know, the patient is, is wiped out and um, uh, they're gonna go home and sleep and not remember much of that day. And uh, you know, over three weeks, you go from uh, antsy uh, to sometimes just being a little uh, hard for others around you to understand. Uh, to that final phase where I would do this again. And, you know, I compare it sometimes to childbirth. If you ask the, a mother, uh, you know, the, during delivery, if she's going to have another child, <laughs> you're probably going to get no for an answer, but obviously uh, they do. We're going to discuss nature's healing curve, which is really kind of the, the crux of this whole presentation. And again, you know, it, it doesn't happen overnight. So it takes a while to go through this process. And like I said, in the early stages, patients just are, leave me alone that first week. You know, they may be fed up with it. That second week, they get their s stitches out. Most of their bruising should be gone in the next several weeks. And, you know, after uh, three months is when I usually take my final pictures. And I think that there are some changes uh, that occur over this period and really even uh, over six months, but they're really small changes. Usually you get into that six week period and you're, you, you're seeing pretty amazing uh, pay, uh, changes. So the healing doesn't happen overnight. And when a patient has surgery, sometimes days can seem like weeks. Uh, every patient responds to surgery differently. And for some patients, it literally is a breeze while others have a harder time. And, uh, you know, you have to remember that every butterfly <laughs> comes from a caterpillar and it simply takes uh, weeks uh, or months for the final result to blossom. And when I come in to see my patients 24 hours later, you know, my average patients are doing great and they're smiling and uh, drinking orange juice and uh, eating crackers or something. But, you know, every once in a while, there's somebody that's really taken back by the whole process and we have to um, uh, understand that and get them through this. Fortunately, that is the uh, exception and not the rule. Now we're going to talk a little bit uh, about the uh, how the swelling goes. So uh, you have your surgery on that first day. Obviously, you're going to be uh, pretty beat up. And, you know, the swelling kind of uh, accelerates and usually uh, maximizes around the third day, I would say, for the average patient. And so they're, that's when they're going to kind of be at the top of this roller coaster and look their worst. And then as you start coming down, you know, you still, you're still sw swollen. And, you know, by two weeks, most people are going back to work. Now, that doesn't mean they're not going to have swelling or some bruising. But um, so you get to that three-week period and they just look better and better. And you have to remember that swelling is nature's response to surgery. And it happens in all patients. And it's variable. And, you know, some people swell and bruise severely, while others, you know, hardly swell or bruise at all. And um, although it seems to take forever when you're having surgery, it will always improve and go away. And one thing that I tell patients is I can tell all of my patients with extreme accuracy about anatomy, about my incisions, about the anesthesia, you know, about the procedure, but trying to predict how one patient is going to swell or bruise uh, versus another patient is, is pretty tough. And, um, you know, that's why I tell patients if they're going to have a facelift, which is my most popular and favorite operation, you know, and they have a big event coming up, a wedding or a reunion, give themselves four to six weeks. Um, because, 
If you rush a recovery, it makes it hard for the patient, the family, and the doctor, for sure. So, you know, the three R's, rest, relax, and recover. And it's really important for the patient and their caregiver and their family to know what they're supposed to do after surgery. And this comes with pre-planning and thinking about it. And I have numerous videos about this for my patients, so they're prepared. And uh, a top-notch office that does uh, a lot of surgery day in and day out uh, is going to be able to make this safe and easy for the patient. So you have to take your medicines exactly as directed because the patient has a lot to do with their recovery. Uh, you know, the surgeon is not the only person that uh, makes a difference here. And you need to know what medications not to take because you don't want to bleed or take other medications that may complicate your recovery. Um, you know, you have to know how to use proper surgical hygiene and what to use and how to do it to keep these areas clean to avoid infections or complications. Uh, activity is very important and in today's world so many people exercise and everything and again you have to use this first two weeks to rest relax and recover so it's important to know what is what you can do and what you can't do and especially things that may pull stitches out or harm your result um, you have to know when your follow-up appointments are and be available and again the patient has a lot to do with the final result it's important for the patients to understand that, you know, again, like I said, this surgery is a stress and they're going to have, uh, they're just going to have less uh, energy and zip. And, you know, rest and relaxation is so important. And the immediate post-op period is not a time to clean your garage or work in your garden. And severe complications can occur from post-operative exertion and they can complicate the final result and the patient's health. So the surgeon is responsible for the surgery and the patient is responsible in part for the recovery. If they don't follow instructions, the best surgeon in the world uh, will not get their desired result. So I always tell patients, use this opportunity to be uh, a queen or a king and be catered to. Enjoy your recovery. Just relax and rest. Catch up on your movies and um, just don't perform any functions that are going to increase your blood pressure or promote bleeding. That's when you want to hydrate, have a high protein diet, and um, uh, taking multivitamins is a good idea, and sleep like a baby. That's what I want my patients to do. The more you rest, the better you'll heal. So one thing about cosmetic surgery, it's not just a uh, surgical situation, but it's an emotional situation. And especially with what I do, all I do is uh, head and neck surgery. So I don't do boobs, bellies, or butts. And you can hide uh, those other types of surgery. But for the face, while you're recovering, it's all out there for everybody to see. And, you know, patients are sometimes nervous uh, about how, how others are going to uh, react. And some patients don't want anybody to know that they had anything done. And other patients uh, don't really care because, like they should be, they're doing it for themselves. So it's always interesting to view how, uh, you know, how others are going to view you, uh, to think about how others are going to view you after cosmetic surgery. You know, some patients are upset if their peers notice, and some people are upset if they don't notice. So the bottom line is that any patient that's doing cosmetic surgery, they should be doing it for themselves and not for somebody else. Um, if you're doing it for somebody else, then you already have a problem. All right. It's nice that other, uh, others may notice, but you need to do it for you. Um, I always tell my patients that natural cosmetic surgery should whisper and not scream. So most patients will have subtle changes, but some patients may have very dramatic uh, changes if they have a lot of skin excess and wrinkles and, and so on. So they have to be prepared to look different. Uh, and after all, this is the reason to have cosmetic surgery, right? So the reactions to other is also others, the way they react to you and your new look uh, is based upon personalities of friends and associates. So, you know, there's always some people that are going to be jealous because they couldn't have cosmetic surgery for some reason. Maybe their spouse wouldn't let them or they couldn't afford it. And, and you know, some of these busybodies will um, uh, talk negatively about somebody's results. And um, you just, you could probably predict those people in your life. Um, 
Uh, and you know, there's uh, some patients, uh, some of your friends and, and workers may be so unhappy with their own life that they don't want you to be happy and they'll speak negatively about your result. Thankfully, this is pretty rare, but any, um, busy surgeon, uh, that's been doing this for decades, uh, has stories like that. So when we change the way we look, it's sometimes hard for us to get used to it. So don't be too quick to judge your new look because it does. It takes weeks or months to settle in and get used to it. And, you know, this the bottom sentence here says the vast majority of patients become very pleased. I would say 99.99999%. You just have to get uh, used to that new look and uh, uh, it takes a while. But competent uh, cosmetic surgeons uh, are going to have a safe result and a predictable outcome and a good result. So you just have to let the healing catch up to that. So in closing, obviously, I think I have stressed that uh, cosmetic facial surgery or cosmetic surgery in general uh, has a significant recovery process. And, you know, people are usually anxious before their surgery. And I think that probably every patient that has cosmetic facial surgery at some point, you know, before, during, uh, or before, during their recovery or their surgery probably has a little worry in the back of their mind that they're going to end up with some, um, you know, TV show, uh, cosmetic surgery nightmare or something like this. But again, if you're going to a surgeon, uh, who uh, only does cosmetic procedures and does a lot of this and uh, has good outcomes, uh, has an accredited uh, surgery center, uh, a great staff, uh, a doctor that's personable and available, and someone that can show you hundreds if not thousands of cases that they have done, uh, your experience is probably going to be great and it's going to turn out well. So again, I'm Dr. Joe Niamtu. I practice in Richmond, Virginia. Cosmetic surgery is my passion and I'm a lucky guy. Uh, and when I go to bed on Sunday night, I am pumped up to go to work and do facelift surgery and eyelid surgery and the great procedures that we do. So uh, our, our website is lovethatface.com and our office is 804-934-FACE. Richmond, Virginia. I'm Dr. Joe and I am too. And I want to thank you for the greatest gift of all that you can give anyone. And that is your time.